welcome to Lisa's painting party. I'm Lisa and today we'll be doing a really fun uh, colorful image that I did uh, initially um, digitally on um, my iPad and um, I want to recreate this in acrylic paint. So if you're up for it I would love for you to join me live right now. If you have your paints ready I'll go through all the supplies that you need. If you're not able to join me live, that's totally fine. You'll be able to watch this video um, under the videos tab on the Facebook page whenever it's convenient for you. And I'll also cross post it over to my YouTube channel, Lisa's Painting Parties. Um, this exact same video will be there and then you'll be able to watch it there if you prefer um, to do it on YouTube instead of on Facebook. So um, today I've actually decided to use a larger canvas. I, I've been feeling a little inspired and I wanted to make this bigger and brighter. So I'm going to actually be using um, real canvas, not just my canvas board as I often do. Um, and it's a size 16 by 20 is the one that I'm using this time. Um, I'm excited to do like the bright um, colors and have all the, the everything just kind of pop. And so I'm really feeling that today. So I decided to, to grab one of those canvases for my cupboard. So I usually don't go that big or with a real canvas, as most of you know, because I, I have space constraints. So I tend to like use a canvas board more often. Um, and I'll run through my other paint supplies as well. Um, if you haven't joined me before, welcome. Um, what I do here is basically we have an inspiration image. This one is one of my own designs. Um, and um, I encourage you to paint however you so desire. I will still walk you through my process of how I'm going to be recreating and I'll be as clear and as helpful as possible to ensure that you feel comfortable in creating this um, yourself. Um, that being said, I definitely encourage you to do whatever you like with it in your own way. So if you have your own idea or if you want your own colors or if you want to add any other elements, please do so. Make it your own and have fun with it. Um, and for anyone who's joined me before, welcome back and I'm glad that you're here again. Um, if you'd like, you can feel free to leave me um, at, let me know where you're tuning in from. I'm just trying to set this up a little bit easier for me to be able to see everything. Perfect. There we go. Okay, great. Perfect. So we'll get started um, just a little bit after 6 p.m. Um, so that's in maybe about 10 minutes or so we'll get started and then I'll start going through the process of everything. But before I do that, I will run through all of the um, supplies that we'll need. So first of all, I'll just bring this a little bit closer. So this is the image, this is the painting that we're going to be doing today. So it's a really bright, circular, colorful sky. Um, and the image, the color, I don't know if it's really showing up very well, but there's like yellow and orange and uh, there's some white and purple and blue. So it's going to be very rainbow-esque, colorful, bright and fun. Um, and that's going to be a very big component of this. Um, and then we always have in the foreground, we have like two little mushrooms sticking out. So it's kind of like a magic mushroom kind of vibe to it. And again, um, you can change things up however you wish if you'd like to, but I'm going to stick with this kind of groove because I think it's very fun and happy and summery. Um, so yeah, so we'll be doing that. So I'm going to have this image available. When I start to paint, I'll just move this over so this will still be in view as we go through it. However, um, many people do find it hard to see it because it's still quite small, like when I'm painting. Um, so if you want to have it as your own reference, I did put a post up on the paint party page um, earlier today with this image. So you may want to just jump over there and grab a screen grab of it or download that image. Just so you have it as reference as you go, if that's more convenient for you. So feel free to do that now because I'm not going to start just yet and I'll go through all the supplies and whatnot. Um, also, I believe on these live events, um, you'll be able to like rewind at times or if you jump out for some reason, you can still come back and grab it. So don't feel um, weird if you have to like do that. All right. Hello, everyone. Yay. Garnet from Ohio. Amy from Southern California. Hi, Diana. Hi, Cynthia. Hello, everyone. And this will probably take, I think it'll probably be less than two hours. Um, but because I'm also using a larger canvas size, we'll see, <laughs> it, might, it might be a bit longer just because there's more to cover. Normally when I paint, I've, I've been using like an 11 by 14. So this is quite um, a significant canvas difference. I'm still going to be using my same size of brushes, but I think I'm going to be relying on my, my nice big brush for more coverage on this one than I normally do on my other paintings. 
Um, also, I suggest having like something to drink. So I have my tea with honey and lemon ready to go. I've been a little sick for the last, I don't know, it feels like months. <laughs> um, it's not COVID, it's just like a cold, but it's just been like a sinus thing and it's been going on for almost a week. It's ridiculous. Um, it seems to be giving, like laying off of it now, but my goodness, um, not being able to breathe. I almost forgot what it's like to breathe regularly. But that helps. <laughs> so let's go through the paint supplies that we have. So like I said, I'm using um, a canvas. This time that's a 16 by 20. Again, that's what I'm doing. You can use whatever you so desire. Um, in terms of paint brushes, I suggest having at least three sizes of paint brushes. Um, what I usually say is a large, a medium, and a fine point. Um, so you can have some detail. You can have something kind of in between. You have a nice one, a large one for coverage. Um, and I say that because it really depends on the size of canvas that you're using, like what size brushes you may want to go with. Um, I usually use my big brush here as a, as a size 10. Um, something for this board too, you may want to even go larger than that, but that is the largest size brush that I have. So that's what I'm going to be doing. This one's a size four and this one's a size four as well, but it's a uh, fine point and it actually becomes quite um, detailed when I put water on it. So that's the, those are the ones that I use primarily. Again, if you have more brushes than that, that's completely fine. So use whatever um, suits your fancy, whatever you prefer. Um, I also have my palette. I do tend to do a lot of my mixing my paint right on my canvas itself. And again, I'll talk through that if you're not sure what I mean when I say that. Um, I tend to work pretty quickly when I'm doing like blends because I try to keep the acrylic wet as I go. Um, but I don't put a heavy coat of paint on as I go because then that takes too long to dry. So it has to be like a bit of a happy medium where you're using enough paint that you can blend and spread and it stays wet for a little bit longer. Um, another thing that some people do is they wet the canvas down first before they start to paint. I did do that when I first started, but I actually prefer not to because I feel like that just like breaks down the pigmentation of the paint um, more than I like it. So I don't usually do that when I start to paint, um, but you're welcome to if, if you so desire. Um, other supplies, so I also have paper towels. And I have two water containers as acrylic is water based. So we can try to rinse out our brushes and whatnot. And then I have acrylic paint. So for all the painting sessions that I do, um, I recommend if you at least have your primary colors, your red, yellow, blue, black, and white, um, those primary colors plus your black and white, you can paint anything and we can mix any color with it. Of course, if you have other already pre-mixed paint colors, that's amazing and definitely dip in and use that. And I'll be doing that a little bit sometimes too, but I'll always talk through what to mix to get the colors. Um, oh, no worries, Cheryl. It's all good. Yeah, it's unfortunately, realize that the allergies are bad. I've heard that from a lot of people. I was hoping it was allergies, but it definitely didn't go away when I took like a, an allergy pill. I actually, unfortunately, had like a... Uh, an in-person live paint party to do and I was super excited about it and uh, that's the day it started to really hit me and I was like maybe it's allergies and like I took an allergy pill and like no it was not allergies it's just a cold so I had to cancel it and I was so bummed to do that um, but just to keep everyone safe it was for like um, a 75th uh, uh, year so then five year old birthday party um, so I definitely didn't want to bring or bring it <laughs> any kind of sickness to anyone, especially considering everything that's going on. Um, but yeah, I was really bummed. Of course, timing had to happen that way, but what can you do? Awesome. Okay, great. So great. We're having some good. Okay. Yeah, it is best to cancel. I'm just so bummed. I offered, I was like, we could do it virtually, but it's not, it's, it's great to do it virtually at times, obviously, but when you have the option to do it in person, like. It takes it kind of away from that. So we'll maybe, hopefully we'll have another thing and reschedule in our time. Um, okay, and then in terms of the paints that I'm using, um, I use two different types of paints. And, and again, anyone who's drawn before knows that it's not because I'm in love with these types of paints. It's, it's literally just what's at the store and that's what I get. Um, and so I use um, Crafters Acrylic by Deco Art. Um, this has a matte finish. Um, and I purchased these from the Dollarama. These ones do have a variety of different types of like shades and of blues and reds and yellows and all the different colors with a rainbow. And they're usually about a dollar, maybe more now because everything's <laughs> gone up in price. But um, when I got them, they're about a buck um, Canadian. Um, so, um, so that's the ones I've been using. And so the colors that I'm going to be dipping into of this particular brand are bright red, 
daffodil yellow and peacock blue but again it's just because these are the ones that i've been using more more often right now um and then i have my white and my black and the other paint that i use is this one called artist's loft and this one is um a dries with a like a shine to it and these ones are just called by their actual name so there's no fanciness to it um, and these ones were under $10 Canadian at Michael's, which is like an art and craft store here in um, Canada. So um, that's the other ones I've been using too. So I'll be kind of going back and forth a bit because I really like the shine finish. I'm probably going to be using a lot more of those ones because um, I do want it to look really like shiny and fun. Um, yeah, I think that's all the supplies. So we're good to go. All right. Oh, Lula was saying that she keeps getting interrupted. Let me just check the... Yeah, so it's saying that my connection seems to be okay on my side. This tends to happen every once in a while, like our technology and like the connection. So I, I'm sorry if that happens. If it gets too annoying again, like this is going to be available as a recording. So you should be able to um, watch it at any point if it gets weird or winded and whatnot. Um, Tracy says she likes Artist Loft. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm digging the Artist Lofts as well. I wasn't sure, but I um. I like that I find that I use less of it and it has a better spread. So I'm, I use less and it still gives me good coverage. And I like that it has a shine on it, which is kind of cool. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to just get started in about two minutes or so. So um, as we get there, so as you get all your supplies and you're ready to go, um, a few things. So whenever I paint, I always start with whatever's furthest in the background. So the first thing we're going to jump right into is capturing that crazy, bright, colorful sky. So that's going to be the first thing that we're going to do. So what I would suggest right now is I want you to look at your canvas and decide how much of that canvas that sky is going to cover. And also think about where you want the, the center of that sun to live. So like for me, I know from looking at this as our inspiration image, it comes all the way almost down to the bottom here, right? So we, it, the sky is like a big portion of this. Um, so I'm going to bring it all the way down lower than wherever I think I want it to actually stop. So if I want it to actually stop here, I'm going to bring it down till about there. So I'm going to bring it all the way down. And then I want my main circle, I think, to kind of be like here, I think. So I'm just going to visually just think about that. Um, before I start to paint and that to me helps that process some people like to kind of use a pencil and sketch it that's totally fine if you want to I don't usually like to do that I kind of especially with the sky I just kind of go with the flow of it and we'll see how it all ends up so we'll do that first if you want to start putting some paint on your palette you can go ahead and do so um, I think I'm gonna start I'm gonna start in and I'm gonna build it outwards that's how I'm gonna do it this time so you want to have yellow and white, um, some red to make your orange as well, and also your pink, to be honest. Um, or if you have premixed colors, then you can pop that on your palette as well. Um, a purple, and then like a turquoisey blue, or a light blue, or just a blue is fine. And then we'll go from there. It's kind of weird. I feel like maybe like the blue should go first before this kind of like darker blue, but meh, we'll feel it out. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Um, and I'll show you like how much paint I'm using. Again, I'm going to be using a little bit more than I normally do because the canvas is larger. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, also, these paint parties are completely free. Sometimes there's people who go into the comments um, and try to get you to click a link to access it or to get you to spend money or whatever the case is. So please don't do that. And if you see it pop up as I'm um, going through my process, um, please, uh, if you can report it, that'd be great. Um, or just like comment to let other people know like don't touch it in case you people jumped on because I really don't want anyone to um, get scammed. The other thing I noticed that they were doing um, last week and the week prior instead of doing those scammy links they were going and like person like messaging people like all of you guys um, being like oh I really want to connect I'm gonna I'm gonna send you a message or friend me like things like that and did it like multiple people which just put my guard up because I'm like, I don't trust that. Like something sketchy with it. Um, it just seemed a little bit weird. So just be on the lookout. And uh, I would probably suggest if you were going to agree to that, like be on high alert, but it might be a sketchiness thing. I wouldn't even, I would just ignore it, to be honest. 
Um, but yeah, those are just the two things I wanted to say. If you did want to support me directly, there are links there that are my own links that are on the Buy Me A Coffee link or on um, PayPal. So if you did want to do that, you're welcome to. You don't have to. It's there if you want it. If you want me to host your own party as well, um, and hopefully I'm not sick and I have to cancel on you if it's in person. Um, if you're in the Toronto area or Greater Toronto area, then I can do things in person, obviously. I mean, if you want to fly me out to where you're at, we can have a conversation about that, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but anyways, but, or if you want to do a virtual as well, we could do a virtual party too. Um, and there's a link to my website so you can take a look and see if that's something that you'd be interested in doing. Okay. So one more sip of tea. And it's time to start painting. So I'm going to move this guy over. I'm going to do it like that, I think, even though you can't see the bottom too much of the painting, but the bottom is just very dark, so we don't need to worry about that too much. <laughs> okay, let's get some paint going. So I have my white paint. The one thing with these lids on these artist locks, I don't know if it's just this particular lid or not, they tend to, like, as soon as I, if I shake it and I open it, it, like, bubbles out and it makes a huge mess. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen today, but, okay, good. Today <laughs> wasn't so bad in that moment. I'm going to use quite a bit of white and I'll show you how much I'm using of things once I pop it on my palette. Okay. Hi, Diane. Also, this particular blue from Artist Loft is like, I find it so pretty and so bright. Like, I really, really like it. The shade of it, which again, this one is just called, just called blue, but it just, I love it. It's so fun. Okay. Yes, I'm going to show you that first. So that is how much of each I'm putting on. So I always use a big glob of white. I end up using white a lot to do a lot of my mixing. So I tend to use quite a bit. Okay. Um, let us, like I said, start wherever we want to start with our, our sun or our light source. So I am going to start with yellow, even though I do have a bit of a ring of like white around it and, and you can alternately start with white depending on how you want your sun to be. But like I said, I'm going to start with yellow. So I'm going to start a bit smaller than what I will eventually make my sun. So that's going to be kind of the center of it, I'm thinking. Okay pretty so there we go and then I'm going to grab my white and just start to like go around it and go back at some more white and I'm going to start to like circle my sun and bring the white in a little bit just to start having a different value happening make it a little bit lighter I tend to use my um, paper towel so I'm having a bit too much yellow on my brush and I want my white to take a bit more of a hold on this. So that's better. That's more what I want. Okay. So we have that starting up. And now I'm going to go back to my yellow and I'm just going to put like little lines around because I want to start mixing an orange and I want to do it right on my canvas. So then I get a little bit of red and then I'm just going to do like little lines. Which again looks kind of weird right now. Trust me on this. Just going to take off the excess from there. I'm going to go back to my yellow now and now I'm just going to go over and start to blend these colors together using the yellow as my blending okay now I want to be cautious because I don't want to bring this in too close to my light space so before I go in and try and touch it up and make it more blendy I'm just again going to clear off this brush okay I'm going to go back and get some more white start in the white zone and then come out into the darker area and start to kind of just go back and forth very lightly on my brush but still like blending it and as I go up here I'm noticing again my brush is getting too much yellow 
I'm just going to wipe it off again with a paper towel, get a bit more white, start in the white zone, and then bring it into my yellowy orange. Like that. So now it starts to blend it really nicely together and without having the effect of it getting the darkness coming too far in. And we have a nice, like, orangey. Ooh, that's a bit too red. I grabbed a little bit of red on my brush. That's not what I wanted. I wanted it to be a little bit lighter. There we go. Just put a bit more yellow into it. Pretty, pretty. Okay, and I'm just trying to keep it into like a circular kind of motion. Everything's still quite wet. On the outside, it's not as wet. So before I start doing more blending, I'm going to need to get more paint on here. So the next color I want to go into is kind of like a pinky, purpley kind of vibe. Um, I think what I want to do first is I want to get this outer ring, again, a bit wetter because it's pretty dry already. So because I did a, a mix right on the canvas, I'm going to start again with my yellow. I'm going to go all the way around. And again, I am working a little quickly because I don't want the paint to dry before I can get my next like, shade happening. Okay. And then I'm going to go back and get my red because I want to make that that orangey again. Get it a little bit more intense. And everything, like I said, is quite wet, so it blends really nicely. And I am using my big brush. I don't know if I had mentioned that already, but maybe I thought it was obvious. <laughs> but I shouldn't. I should make sure I say it. Okay. And now I'm going to continue with that red around. My bright red. Okay. Okay. Just going to clean up the brush a bit. And now I'm going to get my white so I can start getting it a bit pinky. So I'm going to get my white start on the outside and slop it on. I'm still going kind of in that circular motion. We do need to blend it a little bit into our orange zone. Again, we want to be cautious because we don't want to lose our orange or our other values that we already have going on. We just want to make sure we touch and we get a nice, a nice like, blend to it. We don't lose what we already have. Okay, now we already have a nice pink, a pinky orb happening. Okay, and I want to keep this coming out. I'm just going to use white to keep kind of pulling it out first, and then I might put a little bit of red back in to get it a little darker. Because right now it's getting a little a tad too soft. Which might be kind of cool, actually. I don't know. Maybe we will make it a little softer. Okay. And I want to just make this, again, a little bit larger than I want it because I want to put that purple, I want that purplish color to start coming into play in a little bit. So if I only want like this much pink, I need to make it a bit bigger because that purple still has to come on and like land in that area. Otherwise, you're not going to have enough pink on here. So I'm just, I just put a little bit more red in that white zone just to continue this loop. I need to get a little bit more red and 
this area. And I think I want a little bit more yellow because it's lost a little bit of my orange. So I'm just going to pop that back in. And it's kind of just like a play between it. So you just want to go back and forth and see what you are digging in terms of the color, in terms of the movement of it. Okay. And now I want to start putting in a little bit of blue into this zone so I can start bringing in my purple because blue and red make purple. So that is our friend. So we're going to start with that. We're going to throw in some red on top. And if you are someone who prefers to premix your color on your palette, you can absolutely do that. You don't have to, this kind of stresses you out, like that's completely fine. And I'm just going to get some white to kind of get this blend happening between these two zones. And again, I'm using my paper towel quite often to try to get rid of when I have too much of a dark color and I don't want it to like get dragged into my other zone. I sometimes want it a little bit, but sometimes it's it, it's too much. Yeah, you absolutely can. So Brenda's asking, can you use a small spray bottle to keep the canvas wet? You can. You just need to be cautious as well um, because you don't want to, you want it to be like misty, I guess. If you end up, if it gets too wet, then it will um, affect the actual paint fully, right? So you just want to be a little cautious about that. Okay. Very pretty rainbowy sun. I don't know if I want to get a little bit of purple up there. I kind of do. I think I want to bring this out even further. So I'm just going to pop more red. And again, if you have like a premixed purple that you want to use, you can definitely do that. And then I'm going to grab blue. And go right on top of my red. And that's just like a kind of an ugly band and then we'll mix it in a bit so that it blends nicely into the last color without overtaking it entirely. And then from here we want to go into like a blue. And then we'll just go with blue and then we might lighten it up as we go. So like that will make it almost look like a night sky, which kind of doesn't make full sense. <laughs> a big sun there. Do you see how pretty this blue is? I love this, this blue. So I'm just going into the last color. I'm blending it in and then out. And then maybe I go up a little bit higher and a little bit lower. I'm trying to keep my strokes kind of in this like circular vibe. Big, big strokes. Okay, I think I want to add some white in here to get this blue a little lighter. Let's do that now. Just pop more white, a big blob of white in here. Let's grab some more white. Wah! <laughs> it's a really big canvas for where I paint on normally. Okay. Get this brightness happening. And 
more white. Go away. They're fantastical. I don't think there'd be like a purple rain and then it goes into light blue normally, but. This is our magical kingdom, so we can do whatever we desire, make it however you want, there is no wrong way. Maybe, maybe actually <laughs> as I'm painting and it's splatting onto my iPad, maybe that's the wrong way. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't be letting paint touch it, but... I'm just going to bring this across again, lower than I want my There we go. How pretty. I love it. Okay. So we have a nice base happening. Really pretty, really bright kind of weird in terms of the color variation but you know what we're gonna go with it we're gonna have fun with it and it's gonna work out nice so what I like to do next up is I want to add some more detail with the sky so if you can see here in here there's some like additional streaks where you can see different like lines and vibes of color so I want to do that and then there's also like dots as well that kind of go in like a circular line. And I really like that style a lot. And so we're going to do that too. So the first thing <clears throat> is I'm going to get like, get your medium sized brush or a brush that you feel, maybe it's even a fine to size brush. It's really up to you. Whatever you feel like you have a bit of control over and you want to start putting some little like strokes here and there. Um, as I say that, I might actually go with my fine brush. I'm not sure yet. I think what I want to do first is I actually am going to, redo this a little bit because I want this blend to be a little bit more impactful and when I say redo I'm, I'm essentially going to do the exact same thing I did first time I'm just going to do like another coat of it so I'm going to start with this yellow center and I'm also just using like a smaller brush this time just for a bit more control but it sometimes is good on a large canvas but sometimes it drives me a little nuts Okay, so I'm going to bring out that, and then we're going to go with our white. Okay. I can get some more yellow, bring that out. And I'm just going to do it in this middle area, the closest to where my like this orange, yellow, red area is where I want to just redo a little bit before I put in some of my extra little lines here and there. More yellow.
missing my orange like I did before. Only with a very thin brush, so now it's a lot less paint gets on it and it takes a little bit more time. Again, as I'm doing this, as my paintbrush has too much orange or red on it, I'm just wiping it off on my paper towel and then going back and grabbing more yellow before I come back in and drag this yellow more into that. Ah, see, because that's what happens. You don't clean it off and you get orange in a spot where you don't necessarily want it to be. I'm digging that more. Let me just get a bit more white here. There we go. I think that's yes, I like that blend a little bit more than what we got before. Hi Sharon. Hi Sheila. Hi Tom. Glad you're all watching. That's awesome. Okay, so now I want to go in and put my little little lines of things. I think I am going to use my pre-mixed orange for this spot just because I want it to stand out a little bit more. Is there a white paint on this? Like what? Why is this so dirty? I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> I have a little bit of pre-mixed pink as well, so I might use those. And I have a blue. So I'm just using. Oh, I'm going to a purple. Just because I want to put in a few little, like, detailed lines. And it'll be easier if the colors are pre mixed. And so if you have a pre mixed, cool. If you don't, you can mix a little bit in, like, globs on your palette. So you can mix some, like, red and blue together to make purple, or white and red to make pink, and so forth. So I have, like, little globs of some of the other colors happening there. So I can do a few specific lines with my fine brush. So what I want to do with my fine brush, and we can start wherever, wherever your heart contends. Let's, let's maybe do, maybe I'll just start with the yellow to start. And then we might play with other. So I have yellow on my brush. And what I want to do is I'm just going to put like little, like lines in like the orange area. I kind of go in this like circular just to add a little bit of more painterly kind of texture and motion into here. I'm going to go into the white as well a bit, I think, like this. And again, I'm always going back and getting more paint because such a thin brush that it, as soon as you touch it, it's like gone. Okay. So there's a little bit of yellow lines. I don't know if you can see that too well, but there's like a couple little strokes of yellow. Now I'm going to go and grab some orange and do the same. 
and it's going to come a little bit into my yellow area, just a little bit. Also going to come out into my red. Or pink, I guess, but it is kind of more red, isn't it? And then I'm going to go and grab my red. And it's up to you. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. You can if you want to. It's not. Again, none of the things I say is mandatory. It's just if you would like to, you can. You can wait and see how mine turns out first and then decide, okay, I do want to do that or I don't. So I'm going with red and just putting a few little, again, similar like little lines happening again. I'm going to get some pink. I want to do that with the pink. And I want my lines as they come out to be a little bit like longer and I don't know about thicker, but they're going to be a bit more impactful and closer it's they're going to be a bit smaller and thinner it's kind of what my brain is thinking we'll see how that goes Some of those little lines happening over here. And now let's go and grab our purple. And we're going to start to gonna pull a little bit in. I'm going to get my medium sized brush to continue this outwards. Because it's starting to get a little too thin, and I think I want it to be a little thicker. I think. And we'll do a few more and then we'll switch over. stick with this brush for now and then we'll change. I'm going to go with some blue.
think that looks kind of neat. All right, <clears throat> what's next with this? Um, I got my regular and a darker blue. I'm gonna do a little bit of that too, but I think it's gonna just remain in this zone. This purpley sort of transitions to this lighter. I think that's good. Okay, so now I think I want to use some white as well. Make sure my brush doesn't have any other color on it. Um, I do want to get those dots, but I want to get a little bit of white happening first, I think. Ooh, sometimes there's... <laughs> The glob's a little bit too much. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear, there's like kids like just screaming outside. <laughs> mm. I think having fun, it sounds like it's like a, <laughs> it's not like a death scream, it's more of just a... <laughs> being silly scream. I think the white's making it pop real nice, which is cool. I'm feeling it. It almost feels like this, like rippling, like underwater at this point. It's kind of changing it up a little bit, but I'm, I'm kind of digging it. Great. So I think I want to put in a couple of those dots because I do really think the dots are kind of funky and cool. So I'm going to go with white and start with white. And I'm just going to, it doesn't matter really where, I'm just going to go like dot, 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 dot. And then we're going to put another set of dots like here. And I kind of like five or like odd numbers I should say, but five feels like right to me. So I'm gonna do it in fives. And right now in white, but I might change up the color too and then do a different color. I'm just putting them wherever I kind of feel like it. You know, it's a little bit funky.
I'm going to start coming off the sides, so I'm going to use it like one or two. Make it look and feel a little continuous. Do, 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 do. That's so pretty. Hi, Marty. Shall we do some other colors? I think, I think so. I think the answer is yes. Different dot colors. I think the answer is yes. All right, let's go for like a blue. Do you like that one? I'm gonna do more. I'm gonna do like nine or something in that one. see where else I want it. Right here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Another color. What's next? for our dots. Maybe pink? I'm feeling pink. Dots and splotches. Why not? It's a I need a big row of them too. to see in these um okay where else let me look back and see these here Cute. All right. Now, next color. Do we want to do any more dots? I'm feeling almost complete with my dot explosion. I think I'm going to go yellow. And I think I want it here. And I think I want some here. And I think I want some here. Oop, there's still some. That's what on that side. And I don't want it to be green, so. Let's 
Yeah, that yellow is looking nice. I like that. Kind of put it wherever you feel like it. Not really any rhyme or reason. Just feeling. Maybe orange? Oh. Okay, I'm gonna do orange. Two. And then we're gonna move on. Ooh, my orange is like drying out. I think I'm good with that. Okay, what are we thinking? How's everyone doing? How's it looking? Are you having fun with it? What's going on? I'm having a sip of my tea. Wow. I'm gonna go from there. It definitely has a lot more, like, vibrancy. I'm digging it. I feel like I almost want more little swoops <clears throat> in my painting, I think. Like I like it, but I feel like it's a little sparse almost. I want like more, more of these lines. I feel like I might go back and put more in. Just thinking if I want to do that now, if I want to wait, I'm not exactly sure. I'm going to do a little bit now. Because I definitely want things on top of this after, right? So, okay, so I'm going to get some best light blue. I want it to be a little bit more blue than that. I want it a little thicker. Might be a little tricky because I don't want to ruin my little dots either. It's going to be a little tricky. I can do about putting these in and if it doesn't work then I'll just leave it. I don't know actually. I feel like I'm, I'm too worried about ruining those little dots. You know what? I'm not going to do that right now. We're just going to continue on I think at this time. Okay. So the next thing that's for this in the background is the land that everything's kind of sitting on in the foreground here. So the land in that it's done in like a, a black like it's really dark. I don't know if I want to go that that dark black. I think I'm going to go more of like a um maybe like a really dark, almost like a purple or like a darker blue or something, maybe brown, I'm not sure, just to kind of 
not go so deep in, in the black color. So I don't really want to go that route, I don't think. So I am going to need a little bit of black just to get my other colors a little darker. Okay, so I think we're going to go with my big brush. My big boy brush. Okay. Um, and then I think I'm just going to do the blue and the black, I think, for now. It's going to look very dark, but let's just start with that. Okay. And so the base can be whatever you want the base to be. So I want it to have a little bit. It's going to kind of go up. And it's going to kind of come down a bit. It's going to be like a little hilly. But it is absolutely going to cover that line of where my, it's going to go above where my sky is, right? Because this is in the front of it. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so now I'm just going to fill in the zone. I want to do the size of my canvas if it makes sense. I like to do the size. I definitely missed a lot of it. I think I'm so used to using my canvas for that I'm out of practice of actually painting. Even though I do try to remind all of you to paint it, I definitely did not paint the sides. <laughs> okay, what can we do? Just do the best you can. Okay, so there you go. So now we have our land at the bottom. Oh, good. I'm glad you guys are liking it. That's fantastic. Okay. <clears throat> so next up, we want to put in the bases of our mushroom. And these mushrooms are pretty plain, straightforward. You can do them, again, any which way you so desire. If you have your own style version, feel free to do so. Um, so I want the base to have a bit of brown. So if you have premixed brown, you can use that. Um, or if you need to make your own brown, uh, you can mix blue, red, and yellow together, and it makes um, a brown. The thing is, it depends sometimes on the types of blues red so sometimes it with like a peacock blue or whatever it might change the the color of it a bit so that's the only thing to kind of watch for so we're going to get whatever you want to start using everything's still very wet so it's this is not the time to do this but i'm still going to start i'm going to put in where i want so one mushroom is going to kind of live here and one's going to live here and they were actually pretty big. I don't know if I want to make them as big as they were. I don't know. I'm not too sure. I think I will. Okay. So this one's going to be like here, I think. And this one's going to be like here. Yeah. Okay. So this guy's going to... As I go, keep that pigment in the blue pigment and just make it give me a base for the base of my mushroom. Okay. 
and the way I've done this is kind of almost like a, a teardrop, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, different mushrooms have different kinds of vibes to them. You can do it whatever way you want. If you want to make it more realistic, you can. You want to go more Super Mario Brothers, you can do that too. I feel like this kind of does have like a Super Mario vibe to it. This one's a little fatter. So, um, I want to put a bit of a shadow on the top because the top of the mushroom is going to cast a shadow here and on the side oh, here. I think I'm going to have to wait until it gets a bit drier though because it's too wet, I think, to really get this going. Kind of look like weird rocks right now. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside. I'm gonna go over. I'm gonna shouldn't be doing this when it's really wet. I shall wait until it's until it's drier. But again, anyone that's painted with me before knows I don't like to wait and I like to still kind of touch it and play with it and see if, see what happens. So that's what I'm doing. I'm doing a little more brown in here. Ooh, that's what happens. I kind of mess up my line there. Okay. a little more black. The brown in the middle. I put a little bit of a white highlight there. And then I'm going to put my black kind of shadow on this side. Okay. okay, so we got our base going on there. And now let's start playing with the tops of our mushrooms. So whatever brush you want to use, I think I'm going to keep using this brush. <clears throat> and I don't know if my red's going to really pop if I just try to stick it on as is, but we're going to try and see what happens. So this mushroom is 
kind of living right here. He's going to do a curve. Like so. And then it kind of... curves a little bit around. And just as I thought, this red is not very opaque, so you can see a lot of what's going on behind it. So it's okay. I'm just going to still fill it in with red, and then I might have to still put some white or something on top just to... Just so I can't see the sky very initially, so it's kind of weird right now. Let's try to put a little bit of white and see if that just makes it a little bit more opaque. And it does. So that works out nicely. Okay, perfect. So I haven't done the under layer yet, which I guess technically I probably should have done already, but that's okay. We're not going to worry about that. Let's do the other curve here. This motion guy. Curve, and then we're going to just bring that around Oof. okay Get a little bit of white as well it's the same thing we did on the other one and that's what I need to do if your red is um, opaque enough you don't need to add anything else to it So that's good. So I can't really see the background now as much as I did before. Cool. Just gonna switch to a finer brush because I want to do the bot like the underbelly of the mushroom, and I need like a gray for it. So I'm just gonna get some black into my white <coughs> to get a gray happening. And then I want to just. Create a little underbelly and right under here in gray. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, and then we're going to just do some, we're going to darken it up a little bit. So same thing here. Cynthia <laughs> says, you, so you went out, you made your own Facebook group, and I <laughs> missed the ground. No worries. The ground, um, I made it a really dark blue. That's the color I ended up making it. In the inspiration image, it's um, it's black, but I wanted to change that up, so I just made like a really dark blue. Okay, so I'm just gonna get some black now because I want to have a little bit of a shadow in this underbelly. So I'm just going to bring the black across the bottom, like so. Same thing on this side. Alright, I need to add a little bit more 
because that black dissipated very quickly. Okay. go and then there's like little kind of rays that kind of come out in black so I'm just going to do that right now too more sections but I think I just want to actually just do like little lines I just need to clean up the line underneath because I kind of messed it up a little bit when I was doing that That guy. I just want to be a little bit different. Okay, I think I might just leave it like that. That's fine. Okay. Um, now I want to go back with my medium brush. And I'm just going to touch up the bottoms of these guys a little bit. Oh, you know what? Actually, I'm just noticing even lines here so I'm just going to with my thin brush just give my shadow here a little bit of a touch up I want it to come around I don't have to come around this way Shadow on the left side too. A little bit of a little okay. Just gonna put some brown in here too. blend it out because I'm not really digging it where I thought I was going to. 
the brown it's not doing it for me Continue on this one here. This is more pure black. A shadow on this side. And again, I have a bit of a shadow at the bottom. I'm good with that but I do want to put some like obvious highlights I want to do like a kind of like that and like that on that side and then I want to do a that and that on this side I think like that actually cool okay let's do our our spots so that's the one that comes off the side just make sure that it is fully white some on the other side too, the other mushroom I should say, not the other side. Circle over here. Ooh. Okay. I'm going to do another one like here. Okay. There's another 
a lot of spots. Okay. So I got a little mushroom guys. Pretty cute. <clears throat> and so last but not least is whatever foliage you want to put here. So now we're going to do some green. I think I'm going to use my medium brush to do it. Get some blue in my yellow and make a green. Okay. Start with one and then we'll go from there. Okay. So let's say we have. One wisp of grass. Okay, and we're just gonna keep putting a few more in. And then I'm gonna go in and I'll fix up the ends. So I'll pop these in first. Okay. Um, all right. I think I want to get my thin brush again. And I'll tidy up some of these tips. Okay, um, now I want to a little bit of darkness in some of these blades. shadow in it. Okay. I'm just gonna go 
in and put a few other little lines of like things that are living. And I'm just using yellow for these little soupy strands. Okay, and then I think I want to do a little bit more green. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Oh, we still need to put some shadow on the ground because uh, these little mushroom guys are right now floating, which doesn't make much sense. So let's get a shadow happening. So I'm going to use <coughs> black and it's a bit watered down. And then I'm just going to go back and forth in front of where I want the shadow to live. That. And we do the same thing with this guy here. Like that, just to give them like a base. Now they look like they're actually. There we go. complete. Look at that. So 7.30. I knew it was going to be less than two hours. I had a feeling. I had a feeling. All right. Let's go back to me and the painting. So there we go. A beautiful, large 16 by 20. Really pretty. Really bright, colorful, a trippy day painting. So this is, um, like I said, an original painting that I done on my digital canvas and um, first time on acrylic with it, which looks pretty awesome. So I'm really excited. I think it looks really fun and bright and it came out a lot nicer than I thought it was going to. So I'm really happy with that. I hope you all had a fantastic time painting along with me. And if you did, I would love to see your painting. So please take a picture of it. And um, I'm going to be putting a post on the page showing this painting with me. Um, so if you want to snap and put it there or you can put it here, it's all good, whatever way. I would love to see it. Um, please share. Uh, everyone in the community loves to see everyone's painting. So that'd be fantastic. And again, um, next week we'll have another painting party on Thursday. Um, and, um, the June schedule, the plan is that it will come out next week. Um, I think, I think June's already next week, is it not? <laughs> so I think Thursday is June. Um, I know I have one already on the docket for it, but I haven't released what the painting is going to be. So my intention is to have the June, um, video up hopefully on Saturday or Sunday. Um, but you'll know what we're painting next week on Saturday because there'll be a post going up at noon. So you'll be able to see what we're doing then. All right. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Great week and have a great time, day partiers. See you later.